I have the honor of greeting you and opening this grand event generously sponsored by Bayport Credit Union, Newport News Education Foundation, and Newport News Shipbuilding. Thank you for your continued support of Newport News Public Schools. It is always a pleasure to be in the midst of dedicated leaders who are truly making a difference in the lives of our children and making an impact on our great city. As chairman of Newport News School Board, I am fortunate to have the opportunity to serve with you as we positively impact the lives of thousand young people across Newport News. Every day in Newport News Public Schools, we focus on one mission, ensuring that all students graduate college, career, and citizen ready. That's why we work tirelessly to ensure that our students have access to the coursework and opportunities that they would need to be successful. And with your support, great things will continue to happen in Newport News Public Schools. We will begin this evening's program with the presentation of the Color Guards. Here to perform the honors is the Color Guard group from Mitchell High School Air Force National Junior ROTC under the direction of Colonel Christopher Alden. Would you please rise? Our national anthem will be performed by Olivia Cooper. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleam whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glow the bombs burned Sting in gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the last? It is an honor to represent the students of Newport News and to work alongside the school board and our superintendent, Dr. George Parker. Like many of you, I participated in the superintendent search process in the spring and eagerly awaited for the school board's announcement. And on May 4th, the school board appointed Dr. George Parker III as the superintendent of Newport News Public Schools. Dr. Parker served as superintendent of Caroline County Public Schools for three years. 
Prior to being named to that position, he served in Virginia Beach City Public Schools for more than 22 years in various positions, including assistant superintendent of secondary schools, principal, assistant principal, coach, and teacher. Preceding his career in education, he served our country for four years as a naval officer. Dr. Parker brings a wealth of experience to Newport News Public Schools, having served diverse student populations in Virginia Beach and Caroline County. During his tenure in education, he has increased access to college and career opportunities, expanded STEM education initiatives, increased student access to technology, and partnered with businesses for student internships. Dr. Parker stated his career in Newport News on July, started his career in Newport News on July 1st of this year by embarking on an aggressive and comprehensive 100-day entry plan to look, listen, and learn. The goal of Dr. Parker's entry plan was to establish an understanding of the traditions, relationships, and operations of Newport News Public Schools. His first mission was to acquaint himself with our schools, students, staff, the community, and our partners. During his first 100 days, Dr. Parker met with business and industry leaders, PTAs, community groups, students, staff members, and school partners. He stuffed grocery bags at the new Piggly Wiggly. He's spoken at numerous school and community events and marched with students at Todd Stadium to stand up against bullying all while establishing a division leadership team that is primed and ready to move the objectives of our division strategic plan forward. Through an extensive entry planning process, Dr. Parker has been able to engage with our community, listen to our aspirations for Newport News Public Schools, and identify areas of strength and future opportunities as they relate to each area of our strategic plan. Additionally, he has focused on school and student safety, as well as equity and access for all students. This evening, he will present the State of Schools Address, the Newport News Story of Progress and Impact and Innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and please welcome Superintendent Dr. George Parker III. Thank you, and please be seated. So the first 100 days was pretty much like drinking out of a fire hose. It was a lot, there were a lot of meetings, a lot of visits, a lot of new faces. I, I have made a lot of friends. So I thank you for being here today because I see a lot of my friends in the audience today. When I think of uh, student leaders, I think of Maria Jones. And as Mr. Hunter mentioned, Maria is a senior this year at Woodside High School. And in addition to serving on the school board, she also serves at, uh, as the, on the Mayor's Youth Commission. The citywide SCA is chair of my student advisory group, SAGE, and participates in the Woodside Chamber Orchestra. So we are really fighting to get on Maria's calendar when we try to meet with her. <laughs> she is very busy, and I know she's even going to leave here tonight because she has a performance. But, uh, as with many of our seniors, she has earned, uh, learned to manage a busy academic schedule with civic and extracurricular responsibilities. And I'm speaking the truth when I tell you that <clears throat> when you want to see a student that represents college and career ready, you don't have to look any further than, than, than Mrs. Mar Ms. Maria Jones. So thank you for being here and thank you for supporting this program. Please give another round of applause to our students who supported the program, our jazz ensembles, our jazz students, our students who brought the flag, who presented the colors today, and our students who set up displays for you this, this, this evening. It's very important that we continue to, to highlight some of the great things happening in Newport News, and I really rely on students to do that, because who better to represent uh, our school division than our students? So as you arrived this evening, I hope you took the opportunity to visit those students and showcasing the wonderful things. I really wanted you to see some of the amazing things that I have, I have witnessed over the past few months. And finally, I wanted you to see many of the proud community supporters of Newport News Public Schools. 
Again, special thank you to Bayport Credit Union, Newport News Shipbuilding, and Newport News Education Foundation for serving as our sponsors for this event. Could those, any individuals from those organizations, if you could please stand and be recognized, we'd like to thank you for that as well. And our staff at Chris, the staff here at Christopher Newport University has been phenomenal in setting up this event. Uh, they have been a very accommodating, very pleasant to work with, and I'd like to give them a round of applause for, and thank them for allowing us to be here this evening. Last month, I was honored to attend and hear Mayor McKinley Price's State of the City Address. The theme for that, that event was appropriately titled, This is Our Story. This, the word story was an acronym where S stood for success, T for technology, O for opportunities, R for resilience, and Y for youth. At the event, when asked about our youth, Mayor Price was quoted as saying, I think it's our legacy, most importantly for youth, and knowing that a person born and raised under segregation could become a mayor of this city of 185,000. It challenges students to know that if they work hard, study well, stay involved, and have a belief in themselves, they can do anything. As I reflected on our mayor's remarks, I was inspired by his words and the realization that our story, the story of Newport News, is as impressive when told through the lens of public education. A few months ago, I was fortunate to meet a Mr. Teddy Hicks. I think many of you may know Mr. Hicks, a former school board member and former educator. And when we sat down, there was no agenda. We pretty much, he, I think he came in just to eyeball me a little bit and get to know me a little better. But we sat, I sat down with Mr. Hicks and we had a very good conversation. But something that Mr. Hicks said resonated with me halfway through our conversation. He looked me in the eyes and he said, Dr. Parker, you cannot have a community without a school in it. And when he said that, that I, I reflected on that statement, and I'm convinced, no, I'm adamant, that it is not only accurate, that statement is not only accurate in 2018, but it was accurate in, in 1958, and it was accurate in 1918. Our Newport News story and our legacy can be told through the history of schools, such as Huntington High School, which opened its door for African-American children in 1920 and graduated the first class of 48 graduating classes between 1923 and 1971. Before there was a Huntington High School, however, citizens like John J. J. Thompson Thomas Newsom, a respected attorney and civil, civ civic leader, began petitioning for a high school for black children in the community as early as 1912. While it took several years before the city agreed to support a high school classes and eventually a school, the passion and the effort behind building a legacy for the children in the Southeast community was present then and it is still present today. Our story and our legacy can be told through not only the merger of the counties of Warwick and Newport News in 1958 into what is presently known the city of Newport News, but also through the stories of schools such as Newport High School, Newport News High School, Carver High, and Warwick Junior High, which became Ferguson High School in 1961. The promise of a great education, educational system was a significant motivator for the merger of our two communities. Additionally, when you think of these schools and you even look around this auditorium this, this evening, many of our current elected leaders, business owners, educators, parents, and grandparents attended some of those schools. Those schools are not, no longer with us today. However, would you agree that our legacy of excellence in education is present with us today? So tonight I celebrate Newport News Public Schools, past and present, and the role our schools have played in the history of the city of Newport News. We would all agree that this city has benefited from many visionary leaders. Where would we be without forward-thinking and innovative leaders in our public schools? Our schools today carry the names of prominent educators 
who have contributed in the success of not only Newport News Public Schools, but also thousands of students. The life works of educators such as Principal Homer L. Hines, Principal Mary Passage, teacher and counselor Flora Crittenton, and teachers Dorothy Watkins and Ethel Gildersleeve are woven into the fabric of our, of our community. Where would we be tonight if it were not for men like President Paul, Tr Paul Tribble, who has led the development of Christopher Newport University from a little known college to one of the best public universities in the country? And finally, how could we mention our story and our legacy without mentioning pioneers such as Mr. Walter Siegeloff, the visionary founder of Achievable Dream Academies? The Achievable Dream Academies in Newport News now serve 880 students and are about to celebrate their ninth graduating class in 2019. To date, graduates, graduates of the Achievable Dream Academy include attorneys, educators, motivational speakers, and military and police officers. In fact, we have been so successful, Virginia Beach City Public Schools and Henrico Public Schools now have Achievable Dream Academies. So looking today, Newport News Public Schools is the home of 28,000 plus students in five early, early childhood centers, 24 elementary schools, seven middle schools, five high schools, and six special program sites. We are home to six distinguished high school magnet and governor's programs. The Governor's STEM Academy and the University Magnet at Heritage High School, the Aviation Magnet Program at Denby High School, the Center for Arts and Communications at Woodside High School, and at Warwick High School, the Governor's Health Sciences Magnet and the International Baccalaureate Program. Other special programs include Point Option Academy and Enterprise Academy. So today, Newport News remains one of the most innovative school divisions in the region. In addition to being the only school division that currently operates an aviation magnet on the site of an active airport, our students also gain valuable experience through our school division's technology production program. Newport News leads the region in advancing student experiences in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math by offering division-wide engineering design challenges for elementary and middle school students throughout the year, as well as participation in FIRST robotics competitions at all grade levels. And we produce winners, too. Last year, our robotics teams earned regional and national accolades. Yesterday, Newport News Public Schools and CNU did something else that was very innovative. We launched the Community Captain's Early College Admittance Program, which will enable up to 75 Newport News Public School students per year to gain early admittance into Christopher Newport University as high school sophomores. And I'd like to give that a round of applause. Once accepted, our students will, will be paired with CNU student mentors and must remain, uh, maintain a, at least a 3.4 GPA. Additionally, students will participate in visits to campus, receive college advisement, and be afforded the opportunity to take an on-campus statistics course during their senior year. Now, yesterday during my remarks at the, at the signing ceremony, I made a reference to the many individuals in the room at the time who graduated from schools in Newport News and who are living, raising families, working, and serving this community. Tonight, I would like to add further detail to that message by simply stating that great schools support a healthy and growing economy. And I'll say that again, great schools support a healthy and growing economy economy. Now oftentimes we do not think of the school division as an economic driver. However, as I will share with you this evening, there is an abundance of research 
that supports that great schools support the health and growth of, a, of the local economy. I'll start with a study from May, uh, article from May 2016 for the United States Chamber of Commerce Foundation. A gentleman, Mr. Eric Hanushek, a noted scholar on the economic analysis of educational issues and a fellow at the Hoover Institution of Stanford University, indicated in the, in the, in the article the economic growth of a state is directly related to the skills of its workforce. And the skills of the workforce are heavily dependent on the state's schools. Hanyashek further indicated that there's a correlation between increasing its gross uh, state's gross domestic product and investments in school performance at the state level. Looking locally, we can look at a perspective from a, a study that was held and conducted in 2013 by the College of William & Mary, uh, William & Mary's Thomas Jefferson Program of Public Policy. Now they took a look at the economic impact of Williamsburg James City Public Schools. Findings from the study determined that every dollar spent in, the, in Williamsburg James City Public Schools operating and capital budget retained in the region resulted in an increase of $1.63 in regional spending. So there was a correlation between every dollar of the budget and regional spending. Two, other lo two local studies show that high school graduating classes increase pro um, property values and generate additional tax revenue. Since every graduating class contri contributes millions of dollars to the local economy, your investment and commitment matters. And that other study was Virginia Beach City Public Schools, who conducted a study in 2011, if I'm correct. While these findings are very promising, they are even more relevant when we consider that our gra Newport News does graduation better than anyone. We graduate 93% of our students, and we have a dropout rate that is as low as 2.1%, which is well below a state average of 5.5%. These numbers truly support that an investment in the quality of our schools is truly an investment in the future economy of Newport News. Whether our future goals include attracting larger companies, establishing small businesses, or increasing family home ownership, we really cannot have a complete conversation without discussing the quality of our schools. So tonight, it is my hope that we will not only understand but accept the responsibility of establishing Newport News as a premier school division in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So how do we become a premier school division, you might ask? That work lies in a solid strategic plan, but also that guides the day-to-day -day work and decision-making of our organization. When I took the helm on July 1st, I developed an entry plan to chart my first 100 days of service. The plan was developed to assess the work of the key areas of the strategic plan, which we commonly refer to as the academic agenda. The five areas of the academic agenda include quality curriculum, accountability systems, financial resiliency, employee expertise, and community connections. In addition to these five areas, I included two additional areas, school safety and equity and opportunities, because of their relevance to the overall quality of a school division. This evening, I will share some of my thoughts related to each of the seven areas. However, the complete post-entry report, which we'll be releasing in the coming days, will go into further detail on each of the areas of the strategic plan. So I'll begin with the, first area of the, uh, the first area of the academic agenda, which is quality curriculum. For Newport News Public Schools, having a quality curriculum means having an instructional program that provides the information, experiences, and opportunities necessary for students to graduate college, career, and citizen ready. As you can see from this video we're about to play, our schools are doing a great job in providing a quality curriculum at this time for students. And I'd like you to enjoy the video. 
Ensuring that all students graduate college, career, and citizen ready is the mission of Newport News Public Schools. Throughout all grade levels, students gain knowledge and experiences that prepare them to be lifelong learners, successful employees, and contributing citizens. To successfully compete in any job market, students need to be ready for post-secondary education. Students in elementary school are introduced to the idea of college by touring local campuses and conducting inquiry projects that open their eyes to the possibility of attending a university one day. Middle school students continue to investigate college opportunities while participating in higher education learning through science and engineering fairs. <laughs> High school students have a variety of coursework and opportunities to prepare them for post-secondary options. Through the early college program at Thomas Nelson Community College, students actually attend college during their final semester of high school. Advanced placement courses, along with dual enrollment opportunities through TNCC and Norfolk State University, allow all high school students the opportunity to gain valuable college credits. Newport News Public Schools helps prepare students to be successful employees in any career pathway they choose. Elementary students experience career fairs, highlighting a variety of occupations. These young students also have the opportunity to participate in citywide design challenges, where they compete in unique STEM-based competitions sponsored by local and national organizations. Middle school students receive hands-on experience through innovative instruction, cutting-edge technology, and resourceful business partners as they prepare for future careers. High school students have access to career and technical education courses, magnet and specialty programs, and internships to sharpen their career readiness skills. And a number of students gain valuable industry and professional certifications as they prepare for the high-wage, high-demand jobs of the future. Students in Newport News Public Schools are also preparing to be valuable citizens who contribute their time and talents to serve their community. Youth development activities help students build leadership skills while providing volunteer opportunities. Elementary students utilize the iCare curriculum to determine a need within their community and use an investigative problem-solving process to serve through action. Middle and high school students volunteer their time as mentors to younger students. Secondary students are heavily involved in their schools and community by raising awareness about issues that affect their peers and neighborhoods. Through advanced learning, innovative technology, and a wide variety of opportunities, Newport News Public Schools prepare students of all ages to become lifelong learners, successful employees, and contributing citizens. Now, as you can see, we have great things happening in Newport News Public Schools. In terms of college readiness, I identified several promising areas during my entry planning period. Several noted strengths included. In Newport News, our middle school students can take high school coursework and rigorous curriculum um, is provided for gifted and advanced students as early as the seventh grade. At the high school level, Students may take advantage of 29 advanced placement and dual enrollment course le um, college level courses offered through Thomas Nelson Community College and Norfolk State University. Our high school magnet programs allow us to expand access to rigorous coursework while providing career related experiences. As mentioned in the video, the early college program with Thomas Nelson Community College enable students to earn up to 19 semester hours of college credit prior to graduating from high school. I believe that our school division data would support not only a commitment to college readiness, but also solid academic programs at many of our schools. For instance, the class of 2018 earned more than $56 million in scholarships to prestigious colleges and universities around the country. Over the past decade, two schools, Deer Park and Hilton Elementary Schools, 
have earned a U.S. Department of Education Blue Ribbon Award for Excellence, Exceptional Student Achievement and the 2018 Virginia Board of Education's Excellence Awards for Exceeding State and Federal Accountability Standards. The overall school division has experienced a 60% increase in school accreditation over the past three years, moving from 14 accredited schools in 2015 to 26 in this year. <laughs> Newport News Public Schools curriculum is aligned to the rigorous standards of learning, but our educators go beyond teaching the minimum state standards. The curriculum combines the SOLs with the district's college, career, and citizenship readiness skills to better prepare students for success as learners, future em employers, and employees, and contributing citizens. In terms of alignment, the new Virginia profile of a high school graduate serves as a framework for school divisions to establish the curricula necessary to provide every student the knowledge and competencies essential to be prepared for post-secondary education, employment, and life in today's economy. Under the profile of a graduate, a well-developed curriculum will provide opportunities for students to be critical thinkers, communicators, collaborators, creators, and good citizens. We refer to these traits as the five C's. I affirm that Newport News students have gained exposure in these traits on a daily basis. Additionally, we have integrated the use of performance assessments that allow students to demonstrate these skills by using simulated real-world problems. So what will, it, what will the work look like moving forward? In my post-entry report to the community, I have outlined several items that I believe will ensure that Newport News Public Schools has a solid curriculum and appropriate resources to ensure that our students are receiving the best instruction possible. First, we will conduct an external curriculum audit. This is necessary to ensure that the quality and alignment of our curriculum with our instructional goals. While the Virginia profile of a graduate is a great starting point, we will go a step further. And in partnership with our community and local employers, we will develop a profile of a Newport News public school graduate. In doing so, we will ensure that our curriculum and our opportunities for students reflect the needs of our unique community. And finally, we will increase our focus on developmental literacy and writing by one, focusing on preschool instruction, two, increasing the percentage of students who read on grade level by, grade, by third grade, and three, developing proper assessment procedures and supports for students who are struggling readers. Throughout the entry planning period, I was extremely encouraged by the career-related opportunities of our students. So we'll move to the second area, um, which is career readiness. In collaboration with the New Horizons Educational Centers, located in both Hampton and Newport News, our students have access to over 84 career-related courses, as well as an abundance of the governor's, uh, an, an admittance to the Governor's School for Science and Technology. New Horizons has recently expanded to offer courses in emerging co career pathways, such as mechatronics and cybersecurity. In addition to New Horizons, uh, to New Horizons uh, curriculum, Newport News has established supportive partnerships with organizations such as Jefferson Lab, Newport News Shipbuilding, Riverside Health Systems, our military, and many others that enable our division to provide greater access to STEM education and career exploration. In terms of credentialing, Newport News students have earned over 3,400 3, industry professional credentials. And recently, Warwick and Woodside High Schools were recognized as Blue Star Schools and 12 career and technical education teachers were recognized as gold star teachers for their students' successful performance on the WISE Financial Literacy Test. So there are a lot of good things going on with career readiness, but 
what does the work there look like moving forward? In my review of career and technical education courses, it became apparent that the, a division the size of Newport News with major regional employers, such as Newport News Shipbuilding, Ferguson, the Department of Defense, and Riverside Health Systems, might have a greater need for an increased number of seats in certain career credentialing programs. New Horizons does a phenomenal job of accommodating six school divisions, but we need to expand access to these programs to prepare more students for high-skilled careers after high school graduation. We need to ensure that our students are taking advantage of these opportunities through career advancement and exploration. The final area is citizenship. And I believe that the development of a profile of a Newport News graduate will increase the emphasis on developing caring, respectful, and tolerant young adults. As you observe from the video this evening, there's a good amount of work taking place at the elementary, middle, and high school level to provide service uh, learning opportunities and develop a sense of community in our schools. If I had to highlight a program this evening, I would probably start with the Expect Respect program that has been championed through our youth development department. This program encourages our young children to advocate for themselves and others by learning coping strategies for addressing, with bu addressing bullying, harassment, or disrespect in their school community. The program has been implemented in a few schools thus far and we hope with favorable results and we hope to expand that program in the near future. The second item on the academic agenda is employee expertise. As you're aware, Newport News is the third largest employer in the city of Newport News with over 5,000 employees. Consequently, the selection, hiring, and retention of, comp of a competent workforce is very important for our school division. In my review of this area, I was very purposeful in what I, um, what I wanted to, to search for. Questions included. If our, is our recruitment plan as aggressive and supportive of creating a diverse applicant pool? Is hiring orientation and practices support, is supporting re employee retention? Do we have adequate opportunities for professional development, growth and advancement to enable our, our to not only to address retention, but also to support long-term tenure with Newport News Public Schools? Do we have a supportive performance assessment system in place that provides timely and constructive feedback to employees? And finally, is Newport News competitive in terms of compensation and benefits for all employee groups? While my full response to these inquiries is in, writing, is in the written report, I'll speak to two areas tonight that I feel uh, may need the greatest attention. Our data shows that a few years ago, Newport News Public Schools went through a difficult period in terms of retaining personnel. While we retained 92% of our teachers who, who were hired last year, which is excellent, if we go back as far as 2013, our data reflects that 49% of the teachers hired since 2013 are no longer with the school division. Why is this important? It is important because there's a cost and benefit associated to training a new teacher and having them remain with the division long enough to become a, an effective teacher. When a teacher leaves us after two or more years, they take with them any experience and training that they've received from Newport News, which is a benefit to their next employer. Additionally, when you have to hire new teachers year after year, it is very difficult to implement initiatives that will improve the performance of students. Therefore, in order to reduce employee retention, uh, to em employee retention issues, the following three things must take place. First and foremost, we must create a climate of respect and collaboration in all schools and all departments because money is not necessarily the, the main motivator for retention issues. It is how you make people feel that, that is very important. Second, 
we must establish a performance evaluation system for all employees that enables timely and specific feedback, which supports growth, professionalism, and improved performance. And finally, we must continue to build on our progress in providing a competitive compensation system through salary increases and the elimination of pay scale compression. If we address these three areas, I'm confident that we will continue to see our teacher retention data improve, which will result in an increased number of veteran teachers and support personnel within our ranks. The next area on the academic agenda is, ac are, is accountability systems. Accountability systems involves the collection, analysis, communication, and reaction to relevant data. Far too often in public education, relevant um, and impactful data is collected and neither um, effectively analyzed, communicated, or used to further school division goals or initiatives. We call this being data rich and information poor. So my inquiry into this area focused on some of the following questions. One, what are we measuring? Two, are we using the right tools to measure? Three, are there gaps in what we are measuring and the information that we need? And four, what systems are in place for the collection, analysis, and response to student achievement data? There were several findings in this area that will warrant some attention moving forward. However, the more significant findings involve the following three areas. A general need for additional professional development was the primary theme that ran through my, my inquiry into this area. In particular, a genu general need for professional development in collection, analysis, and the use of data. Second, the systemic approach to the identification of struggling readers and writers beyond grade three, beyond the grade three. We do a very good job of identifying struggling readers and writers uh, in elementary up to, th up to third grade. And third, the adoption of assessment practices which measure growth in reading, writing, and math literacy over the course of a school year. Think about that. Every student will not end up where we want them to be by the end of the year but we need to know whether they grew under the charge of that teacher and how much growth took place. That's very important. I believe that a focused approach on these three areas will strengthen our service to students and improve our overall student performance. The next area on the academic agenda was community connections. At the core of many successful school divisions are a variety of supportive partnerships volunteers, and community resources. Newport News is fortunate to have an abundance of community, education, and business partnerships that support the mission of our school division. We have a short video on, those par on some of our community partners and, and our educational partnerships, and I'd like you to enjoy that at this time. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Luckily, the village of Hampton Roads gives students access to some of the world's brightest minds in shipbuilding, aeronautics, medicine, and the sciences, along with the richness of American history. Every day, either in the classroom or exploring the world around them, students learn alongside local, national, and global business partners who make education come alive for all students in Newport News Public Schools. Hands-on learning activities, hosted by generous business and community partners, allow students to gain meaningful life experiences, make educated choices about the direction of their career pathways, expand their STEM skills, and reinforce their classroom knowledge with unique and practical lessons. While nonprofit organizations and local museums make learning come alive, while reinforcing conservation and stewardship of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Many partners work hand-in-hand -hand with NNPS educators, giving our teachers access to more engaging classroom lessons and keeping our teaching staff up to date with modern practices and technological tools. This allows our educators to prepare the next generation of employees 
with the skills, knowledge, and experiences that employers are looking for. Together, business and community partners collaborate with Newport News Public Schools to create an enriching and rewarding learning experience for all students, while benefiting our local and global community for years to come. And we can give that a clap. I think that's a good, that's a good thing that we have us. We're very fortunate, guys, to have that many partnerships and the partnerships, many of which are in this room right now. So uh, we did start a little roll call because we uh, to acknowledge some of our partners, and we hope we're not missing anyone. But we have we are very fortunate to have the folks who are scrolling across this screen. And if we missed anyone, we apologize. But you're all special to us, and we re we really appreciate what you do for Newport News Public Schools. And that list was shorter than I thought, so I know we're missing someone. So <clears throat> as you can see from the video, we're fortunate. And uh, we have a wonderful group of, support of supporters. And um, I have had the opportunity to meet with elected officials, college and university representatives, community and education association leaders, uh, parents, students, Newport News staff, uh, many great relationships I feel I were formed during some of those meetings. Many of those faces are in the room tonight, and I really appreciate you. Um, anyone I engaged in tonight, with tonight, I, I, the first thing I said to you was, I really appreciate you being here. Looking forward, I believe that improving relationships, whether it involves elected officials, community organizations, or community groups, will involve a commitment to three things, okay? Access, transparency, and consistency. And I don't think I need to explain a lot of those. We have to be accessible, we have to be transparent, and we have to be consistently working toward to build that relationship. So I think that's my only takeaway, really. We have the people in the room, we have the people in our community to do great things for Newport News. We need to continue to engage, and you need to engage each other. There are plenty of you who have similar missions, and you're doing similar things. And what a great way to partner with each other to make sure that we're all working together. So thank you for that. The fifth item on the academic agenda is financial uh, resiliency. I was very proud to represent the Newport News Public School Business Department with the Association of School Business Officials International Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting for fiscal year 2017 at our September school board meeting. This award is the highest recognition for a school division by, off, um, by offering offered by, by the association called ASBO. Newport News has received this award eight times and is one of 553 districts across the country to earn this award. An impartial panel of auditors noted in their recognition that Newport News Public Schools financial report is a thorough and a, and a detailed presentation of the school division's financial condition and exceeds generally accepted accounting principles. We are fortunate to have the type of professionals we have in our business department who manage our finances on a day-to-day -day basis. And what are they managing? The amended Newport News financial operating budget for fiscal year 2019 is roughly $304.9 million. Included in the total adopted budget is a state appropriation of $188.7 million, federal contribution of $5.3 million, and local contribution, which is the city of Newport News, of $110.9 million. While this is an extremely large operating budget, when we look at the breakdown of expenditures of this budget, you'll notice that approximately 88% of the operational budget goes towards employee compensation and benefits. As we mentioned earlier, we are the lar third largest employer in Newport, in Newport News, in the city of Newport News, with over 5,000 employees. So roughly 88% of that budget is employee salaries and benefits. The next large, largest expenditure is operations and maintenance. In fact, 
After taking into account employee compensation and all of the non-discretionary operational expenses, really only 5%, roughly 5% of that operational budget, which is a little bit over $18 million, about $18.2 million, is left to do everything else. I'll say that again, is left to do everything else. So we're very creative in how we, and, and very frugal in how we spend our dollars to make sure that we can provide the quality education that we do for, for, these, for our students. And I'll speak a little bit uh, longer about how we, how we go about supplementing some of that in a moment. But it's extremely important when you consider that most of our classroom technology and instructional resources are included in this percentage of the operational budget. Now in terms of capital budget, the capital budget is funded primarily from the city, which includes our large maintenance items, such as roof replacements, HVAC um, replacements, paving, building renovations, and new construction. The capital improvement budget also includes the annual replacement of older school buses. We have over 330 buses in Newport, school buses in Newport News. As you're well aware, they're always on the road. As a division, Newport News Public Schools currently maintains uh, the operational condition of 69 schools and office facilities. In addition to the operational and capital improvement budget, financial resiliency also involves improving opportunities and moving, initiatives of, and moving forward initiatives of the strategic plan. Now, since we spend roughly 5% of our budget on everything else, we have to continue to be aggressive in soliciting grants and, and federal dollars to manage a lot of our instructional programs and also provide additional opportunities for students. So tonight I'm very proud to talk about a few grants that we have either uh, initiated this year or, return, or we are currently working with. The National Math and Science Initiative recently provided us with a, a, a check for $900,000 to support students' access to advanced and rigorous college high school courses. We received nearly $1 million from the Department of Defense for a cybersecurity career pathway. Now, this pathway is very important because it starts in preschool. It goes from preschool to eighth grade. So they're, they're assisting us in providing coding and other resources to elementary students so they can learn coding and other things, eventually working up to a cybersecurity career. We also received over a million dollars from the, state, of the state, state Department of Education to support after-school programs and summer programs. And you're familiar with some of these programs, Spark and We Leap. So we continue to receive dollars in support of our innovative summer program. And that's very, it's very generous of the state to do that. So moving forward, we acknowledge that we have significant capital needs. Um, in particular, the age of our school buildings. We will continue to be strategic and work with our local leaders to ensure that we are meeting the instructional, operational, and capital needs of the school division. I believe that the partnerships will continue to thrive and continue to ensure that we receive the investment needed to ensure our students have a great education here in Newport News. Now, the, those were the five areas, but the two areas that I added in this plan were school safety and equity and opportunities. As mentioned earlier this evening, two additional areas were added. The need to, act, to assess student, a school division's practices and procedures for maintaining both a physical and emotional, the emotional safety of students was very important to me throughout this process. Our children deserve a safe and nurturing learning environment. An important part of my assessment involves the review and discussion of safety procedures and the assessment of staffing as it pertains to school security. Meetings were held with local law enforcement, school security, and staff to discuss current and future safety procedures. Newport News is fortunate to have a school resource officer in all middle schools and high schools. Additionally, Newport News employs 65 school security officers who provide campus security for all of our schools. Our supervisor of school security collaborates directly with leadership, with the leadership of the Newport News Police Department for school safety related matters. Additionally, 
all schools are required to maintain a school crisis plan and conduct mandatory safety drills throughout the school year. Looking forward, there are a few programs related to improving student behavior we will be expanding. We have provided the training and resources for our schools to implement behavior programs such as Positive Behavior and Intervention Supports, PBIS, and another program that's, that's state-sponsored, the Virginia Tiered System of Supports, which was commonly known as VTSS. These programs enable our staff to establish school-wide expectations for student conduct and, positive, and build positive school climates. In addition to behavioral programs, we will continue to work with organizations that provide mental health, such as the Community Service Board, and that's all I think some of our Community Service Board folks are here tonight, and other providers. This is critical to improving our efforts to respond when students are in need of services that exceed the level of expertise provided by our school counselors and other supports. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that, uh, that, that I know we were, we were talking a little earlier. We're also looking at legislation to try to find ways to support additional security officers. So Delegate Yancey has, has proposed writing a bill to do that. And we hope that he's successful with that legislation. So thank you for that. The other area that, that I added was equity and opportunities. And it is the final area of my area of my post entry uh, of my post entry report. Educational equity involves providing every student with the educational supports, access, and opportunities needed to thrive in our school division. This approach may also be applied to individual schools as well as we determine the resources necessary to improve student outcomes. Consequently, for Newport News to become a premier school division in the Commonwealth of Virginia, there are really two realities that we must face as a school organization and as a community. The first reality is that all students are not the same. Does that make sense? All students are not the same. Treating students equi uh, equally will only ensure that some students will reach their maximum potential. More than likely, some students will underachieve as a result of needing more support, while others will not never reach their maximum potential due to having the capacity to accomplish so much more. The second reality is that all schools are not the same. All schools are not the same. As schools are a reflection of the unique community in which they serve, so too are there differences in the needs of the students who attend those schools. Consequently, there may be differences in professional development, the amount of supports that the students have from one school to the next, and other resources may look quite differently from one school to the next moving forward. I hope that you have enjoyed this look back at, uh, at our current and future work for Newport News. These seven areas, I think, will align our work with the strategic plan and also build a strong school division and improve student, student outcomes. As you can see, there's a lot of great things happening in Newport News, and our school division has great opportunities for students moving forward. I cannot emphasize enough the power that lies in this room this evening in ensuring that we provide a legacy for all children and their children and their children, so that we can be proud of that every day. As I have shared this evening, our story, as told through the lens of, of our school history, is one of struggle and perseverance, one of consolidation and expanded opportunities, one of innovation and achievement. And moving forward, I would like to say one of collaboration, equity, and opportunities for all children. Today I stand before you no longer the new superintendent of Newport News Public Schools. I'm simply the proud superintendent of Newport News. And we are all Newport News proud.